Hi everybody, it's April 1st, happy April. I am in the process now of planting out some of my cold hardy annuals. They've been in the basement since February. I think actually my snapdragons were planted in January. So they need to get outside. Um, these are Cerinth. I'm gonna plant them in a garden bed in front of my house. And just to show you what's happening over here with the uh, ranunculus, I just pulled back the frost cover today. We've got a couple daffodils blooming, but they're still pretty small. I have about 45 um, ranunculus plants. I had planted 90 corms originally, so only half of them made it um, between the, you know, the free soak process and planting them in the basement uh, till now. So they will probably bloom in another 60 days um, cause they've been, they were um, pre-sprouted February 25th and it's April 1st. So let's get planting the, some of these cold hardy annuals. Okay, so I planted about 50 Cerinth plants in this garden bed. It gets um, southeastern light. I may fence this area off, but I'm definitely going to be spraying these plants for the deer. They're not supposed to be um, that attractive to deer, but I'm just concerned because I have a big deer problem. Um, so I am going to um, possibly fence this off. But I planted all these. Now I'm going to plant, um, I'm going to dig a spot in a totally new space to plant my snapdragons. And then over in this garden bed, I have some cleanup to do, but there are some lilies in here, some white hyacinth, and um, some daffodils. And then on the, on the left, that is Sweet William. And it looks like a lot of it is coming back this year. I'm just trying to pull out all the like dead, dead branches and leaves right now. And then if you watch my other videos, I planted some lilies about a month ago and those are starting to pop up there and there and we're going to be doing more mulching this spring. We did a bunch of mulching last spring but we didn't finish mulching this area. Then I have this beautiful daffodil here. It's a double. And I have some double yellow daffodils and I've noticed the doubles are taller than the the um, standard daffodil which I believe is the Dutch Master. The standard looking daffodil so the doubles are taller and there's my neighbor's cat he likes to hang out by our house this is a um, uh, lilac shrub which is really too close to the house we keep thinking we're gonna move it so we may eventually dig it out the center died a couple years ago um, it's a sensation lilac and I will show that when it's in full bloom um, but it is very close to our house. And then over here in this garden bed in front of our deck are a bunch of peony plants are popping up. I have a lot of um, low um, perennial phlox. And then this plant here, which is probably going to start blooming in another week or two, is a perennial called Basket of Gold Alyssum. It has a very bright yellow flower. And there's some more daffodils and as you can see all those tall red stalks those are all peony plants okay guys I only ended up doing one contain one winter sowing container of larkspur let's check it out do you see any larkspur growing I see a little bit I do see one oh I see a couple um I don't know if you can see that but I see um, one set of leaves, green leaves, and then I see like four or five seedlings sprouting out of here. So it worked. And then in this container here, I've had this, um, for a few years, this was either from BJ's or Costco. It's great for sowing lettuce as I have trouble sowing full heads of lettuce. So I end up putting fresh soil in this um, container every year and then I sow my lettuce seeds. So I'll be doing that later today. So my daughter and I are going to direct sow some of these. Um, the larkspur, like I just showed you on the deck, 
with the winter sowing method um, is giving is going to give me a few plants that I want to direct sow a few a little bit more. I probably should have sown this a month ago, but and the Orlea didn't um, transplant all that well, so I'm going to direct sow some Orlea. I'll show you that um, planted in my garden in a minute. Um, this one is so fort. It did not transplant well at all. I should have direct sown this one. I'm going to direct sow this today. And then Bupleurum also didn't transplant well, and I should have direct sown that one. So let's go look at um, the garden bed that I just um, planted out a bunch of the hardy annuals and see how they're doing. Okay, so here it is a week later since I planted these out. Um, these are the Syrinth, and they didn't transplant all that well. They were very leggy to begin with. They were in the seed trays way too long, and they germinated very well. And I'm going to plant a little bit more in my basement this week for a second succession. I just don't think they can handle the cool temperatures uh, that we've been having. We have nights that are still down to like 30 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And the days are getting between 50 and 70 degrees, but the nights are still pretty cold. Um, we have some more daffodils right here. And then I planted a whole bunch of, um, and then over here I planted a whole bunch of feverfew. Initially it was doing great. Um, we did have a rainstorm right after I planted it, so they got plenty of water. Um, but I think the cool nights, they just look like they're suffering a little bit, but they'll come back. I know they can handle cool temperatures, but it must have just gotten too cold. Um, but they're going to they're gonna make it okay. Then over in the back, I have some um, Rubeckia. I think that the big, with the big leaves, I think this one is the prairie, it's either prairie sun or Indian summer, and I'll know when they bloom, um, which one it is. And then in the back there is some lace flower, some Orlea that I have planted and it's doing okay, but I am going to plant some more uh, direct sown Orlea today. Um, this is the Bupleurum. It did not transplant well at all. It is really doing badly. I don't know if any of it's going to make it, so I'm going to plant more. And then here are all the snapdragons. I lost a few, but most of them made it through the transplanting process. And yes, the deer have come through here already and nibbled on my lilies that have started to come up. Um, I am putting up fencing today to keep out the deer because um, I have a big deer problem here. I live in north northern New Jersey in the suburbs. There, well, it's the suburbs, but there's a lot of small farms in the in the in the town. Um, so it's suburbia slash rural, um, and there's just a lot of deer here and they come from the woods behind our house. So I need to fence this off because I have a lot of snapdragons. And then we have some yard cleanup. Um, over here are some poppies coming up. Um, this is a lavender plant. I'm gonna get behind here so my shadow isn't showing. There we go. Um, so there's a lot of poppies in this bed. There is the perennial um, basket of gold that comes up every year and it's, it lines this whole walled, um, we have this driveway here and with this little wall and they have spread themselves along the edge and they look really nice. And this is called, this is a different type of soapwort. This is a perennial soapwort that grows. Um, there's a bunch of daffodils in here. This is an iris. I'm excited to see. It didn't bloom last year. It was the first year I planted it. And then there was another iris in here that I saw being nibbled on. There it is. The deer are not supposed to eat irises, but um, it looks like it started nibbling on this, or they started nibbling on this. Um, I also have some yarrow in here. I have a lot of... Um, uh, brown-eyed Susan plants in here that I may transplant to an area that's protected because the deer nibble on brown-eyed they love brown-eyed Susan. This is Leatris poking through. I have a lot of Leatris over here. I have some um, coneflower 
right there. There are some more peonies popping up. Just a lot of um, Leatris over here. I have a lot of cleanup to do. There is the peony plant that I planted about a week ago. There's more soapwort by our mailbox here. Some more lavender plants. I like lavender because the deer do not touch lavender. And then there's a clematis plant right here. More yarrow. And then here's a lot of my peony plants are over in this garden bed and I have to clean up the dead branches, but they're really starting to put a lot, on a lot of growth. I believe I have eight peony plants in this bed. I had Rose Campion in here and I thought it was a perennial, but I think it's a biennial. I think um, the mother plant dies and then I just get like baby, um, like little seedlings this year from, from seeds rather than from the root, like over here. I think this is the Rose Campion coming back, but I don't think it's from the original root. I think it's just from seeds. And then I have more coneflower over here. And there's some daffodils. Just to show you a little more about what the peonies look like, they just have these red stalks. It's interesting because interesting some of them have like green tips and some of them are just all red. And then over here is some native um, plant that I planted last year. It's spreading really quickly. Um, hopefully it doesn't get invasive, but this is um, wild bergamot. It's like a native bee balm and I wanted to try growing it. So it's doing really well. It didn't bloom last year, so it'll bloom this, this year. And then over in this garden bed, I have some yarrow. I have a couple different types of yarrow with, um, there's a little bit of black eyed Susan in here. I have the biennial kind of black-eyed Susan in here. Um, <clears throat> I did plant some Armenian basket flower here and there last year, so that should come up. I haven't been able to see that bloom yet because it's a perennial, so it'll be the first year. So that is it for this garden tour for April 7th. 